Today on episode number 101 of the podcast, we're asking the question, can you be too dependent on someone else? What's up, VIPs? Welcome to Life After Sight Loss Radio, the podcast helping you discover life after sight loss. My name is Derek. I am your host and resident VIP, aka visually impaired person. And across the table from me is our co-host and resident sighted supporter, my lovely wife, April. Hello. All right, dear. We're back with episode 101. Yeah. We're on the journey to 200. (laughs) (laughs) Or at least uh, 105. Sure. Okay. Small steps. Small steps. Small steps. That's right. So we've done 100 episodes episodes in the can and today we are starting a uh, new discussion about being dependent on someone else and the topic is can we be too dependent on someone else you know a lot of times we strive to be an independent person you know and it's like I want to be so independent and sometimes we can swing to the opposite way like I don't want any help from anybody ever Mm -hmm. but then we end up swinging the other way and we're so dependent and that we we almost can't break out of that. So I think today we've got a few statements here that are, you know, things to think about. And then I've got a series of questions to ask yourself, well, maybe am I too dependent? And we're going to figure that out. So let's just jump right into it and see what we've got here on our list. First of all, we've got, there are seasons that we have higher dependence. So for example, you might go through a time where you just lost your sight and naturally you're going to be more dependent on someone in that moment. Especially more dependent than what you previously were. Absolutely, yeah. That's a big adjustment. You're going to have a new dependence on people for new things, different things that you wouldn't have before. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to make a sandwich, you might have to need a little help, you know, in that moment because you haven't figured it out yet. Eventually, you will figure it out. Yeah. But we all have those seasons where we face higher dependency. And that's not just for people that are losing their sight. That could be maybe you start a new job. Yeah. And you're depending on your boss, your supervisor, the person training you Mm -hmm. to do a little more for you. I know you probably do that uh, in orientation uh, with nurses and such. You know, they have higher dependency. You need someone to be a resource to you, Mm -hmm. someone to help you answer questions or, um, you know, kind of guide you through Um, a task or a procedure or something like that. So kind of the same thing is like you said, making a sandwich. Well, you know how to make a sandwich. It's the matter of making sure that you aren't making this huge mess Mm -hmm. and that, you know, you get everything put away where, you know, it needs to be so you can find it the next time too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, everybody is going to face times in life where they have higher dependence on someone around them. That's not bad. That's not good. It's just how life goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's important to remember that. Then number two, taking care of someone doesn't mean doing everything for them. Uh, (laughs) I know sometimes we hear the phrase enabling and things like that. And look, we want to be kind people and we want to be helpful. It's like, let me just do that for you. And that's nice, at least at first. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Doing it for them isn't helping them do it for themselves, right. which is going to play into uh, number three here. But it's it's so easy, I think, to fall into the trap of like, I'll just do it for you. Like, well, it'll be faster. It, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It will be mm-hmm. faster. Um, it'll be easier. It'll be fill in the blank mm-hmm. because it takes, for me specifically, it's like, I just need to get this done and and clean it up or get it out of the yes. way or you know move on to my next thing when in reality, I have time. I need to be patient. I need to be um, allowing you to be independent and not doing it for you. Right. Because, you know, yes, enabling is one thing, but also making you feel like you are independent, that Mm -hmm. you have control, that you have, um, you know, that responsibility to complete a task or to, you know, finish a project or whatever the Mm -hmm. case might be, like giving you that because that gives you... um, encouragement and confidence too. So yeah, absolutely. as sighted supporters, I I don't know, I speak for everyone, but I feel like, yes, there's a lot of times I step in and I just do it. And I have to kind of take a step back occasionally and say, you know what? I don't need to do this. Yeah. He's perfectly capable. It might take a little bit longer and I need to be okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, or it might be something where you do a task and it's not exactly perfect, but it's like, no, I can do this task. And the next time I do the task, it'll be better. Right. You know, and so like, for example, cleaning the toilet, you know, like <laughs> it's one of those tasks that can be a little bit difficult, especially at first, if you can't see what's in there, you know, you're right. just kind of scrubbing around hoping for the best. And, you know, it's real easy to be like, you know what, I'll just do that. 
uh, I'll get it because I want to get it clean. I have a standard I need to reach and so on and so forth, which is good. There's nothing wrong with having a standard. Right. But it's like, how am I ever going to get better at it if I'm never doing it? Well, and when you say that, it's kind of like parenting children as well. You know, you're <laughs> teaching them life lessons. You're teaching them how to, you know, do their laundry or to dust. We go through this all the time with Aubrey. She mm-hmm. hates dusting and she doesn't do it very well. (laughs) So, you know, you know, you're teaching them how to do it. And each time you hope that they're doing it a little bit better or a little bit faster, they get used to doing it. They can do it more efficiently as they do it. And it's the same with VIPs. Yeah, absolutely. Now I I don't want to say we're all children over here, but you know what? Sometimes I am immature. (laughs) That's just the way it goes. Um, But like with anything, you have to do it multiple times. That means you have to let the person do it multiple times and be patient. Yeah. Uh, the third thing here I've got is the old adage to give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish. And the idea is that if you give a man a fish, they can eat for that day. But if you teach a man to fish, they can eat, you know, for many days. And so it's the idea that it's like, Hey, I'll just do this for you. And it gets done that day. Right. But then when it comes up again, you're going to have to do it again. Mm-hmm. And that person needs to be able to step in and say, you know what, I can do this. Whether it's cleaning around the house, whether it's taking care of the kids, whether it's, you know, going and picking something up, whatever it is, yeah. they have to be able to do that. And so there has to be teaching involved. Mm-hmm. Again, we go back to that example of you at work. I think like if you teach that orientee, even if they're a good nurse, uh, in other areas, they right. might have to learn your area, your hospital, mm-hmm. you know, your guidelines or whatever. And so it's like, I have to teach you how to do this. That way I'm not coming to you every single day right. and saying, remember, it's this, you know, yeah. you have to be able to teach them. Yes. All right. So those are just kind of three things to remember. Now I have a series of questions to kind of ask yourself Am I being a little bit too dependent on other people? Now, before I get into these questions, let me just say there's nothing wrong with depending on others and there's nothing wrong with being depended on by others. Mm -hmm. I think it's a give and take uh, or as I like to say, give and receive uh, in relationships. Uh, But there are times whenever we can get into moments of higher dependency, again, not necessarily those seasons of dependency, but higher dependency because of uh, depression or anger or things that we're facing. We just don't even want to do it. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm so dependent on this person. Yeah. So let's go through this uh, list of questions I have here. Uh, first of all, uh, can I go out by myself? Can I go outside the house by myself? Maybe that means somebody takes you somewhere. Maybe that means you get an Uber or a Lyft, something like that. Can you walk down the street to a neighbor's house? Can you go out by yourself? There are things I can do by myself for sure, mm-hmm. but there are things that Oh, it, it is nerve wracking, like little things like going to the doctor because one, I'm going to have to get a ride yep. Two, I'm going to have to find the doctor's office. If I've never been there before mm-hmm. three, I might have to fill out paperwork, which is so scary. Like it doesn't seem like it'd be scary to fill out paperwork, but it's so scary to say like, uh, I can't do this. Yeah. Can you help Can me? You help me. You know, now they'll help you. I mean, most people are nice, but it's that, what am I going to do? I've got to face this thing. And then, uh, what, what if they show me something and I can't see it and it's nerve wracking. So can I go out? Sure. But there are definitely moments where it'd be easier to have somebody with me. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's the thing, no matter what it is, I think that's the thing we face. (laughs) Uh, next is, could I function if left alone for more than one day? You know, sure, one day I'll leave you by yourself. Yeah, I can do that. I can make a ham sandwich. You know, I can take a shower. I can do things. That's fine. But what happens when those days turn into multiple days? Um, Can you take care of yourself? Can you take care of the house? Can you take care of your food? Can you take care of the situation that you're in Mm -hmm. uh, when left alone? I know when uh, you haven't been gone a whole lot necessarily over the years, but there are times when you leave and you go maybe to a conference or something like that. And there's a couple of days. Now, one, I love you, so I don't want you to be away. but I'm like, oh no, <laughs> how are these things going to get done? Now, they always get done because, right. you know, we're adults. We, we figure we it out. We figure it out um, every time. Yeah. But if you can't survive more than a day, that might be a little cue uh, to you. Uh, what would I eat if by myself? <laughs> this is, I just sort of mentioned it like, yeah, I can make a ham sandwich. I can put it, you know, but are all you going to eat is, wait, what's the proper grammar? Will all you eat be potato chips? Will it be, you know, Oreos and and things like that? Or can you make a meal on your own? Right. Uh, Now, there are certain meals that I make, certain meals that you make and things Mm -hmm. like that because of the uh, complicated nature of things. But can I eat on my own? Yes. 
what can I eat when I'm on my own <laughs> is the question. If it's just simply processed food over and over and over, might be a little cue that you might need to pick up some new skills because you've let those skills slide because you're dependent on somebody else. Uh, does my level of anxiety raise when left alone? Does my anxiety raise when I'm left alone? Now, again, yeah. this doesn't necessarily mean that you're too dependent on somebody. This is just kind of a cue, kind of a question to ask yourself, because if you are left alone and your anxiety goes up, that is something to tell you, OK, I need to face this. And that may mean uh, okay, I need to have some new skills so I can feel confident when I'm alone. I may need to talk to somebody about my anxiety, um, whether it's a doctor or a mentor or something like that. It's just something to cue you in that I'm alone and that's triggering something in me, mm -hmm. so I need to do something about it. Yep. Um, and then the last question is, do I let others handle tasks that I can handle and have handled in the past? That's, uh, that's a big one, I think, a lot of times, especially if you're facing depression or, or something going on, you have things that you've done already, mm -hmm. and now we're letting somebody else handle it because either you don't want to, maybe you got it wrong in the past, or you don't want to get it wrong again, you're scared, whatever it is. Are you letting other people handle those things that you can still handle and have already handled? So again, those are just a list of a few questions to kind of ask yourself. Hey, am I you know, being too dependent on the other person? people in my life. And I think in our relationship that can easily fall into, we can fall into that trap because I mean, you're a loving person. You want to help, you want to encourage, you want to do things again, you want to get it done. You right. want to get it done right. Yes. And so it's, <laughs> it's a real challenge to be like, you know what, I'm going to be patient here. I'm going to mm -hmm. let you even, I'm going to let you fail at this so that you can figure out what was wrong and then do the right thing. Which is really hard to do as well, to watch someone fail, whoever mm, it is yeah. in your life, you know, but um, especially someone who's going through sight loss or has gone through sight loss and now they're learning how to do things over again with, you know, the new circumstances, it mm -hmm. makes it very hard to watch you struggle yeah. in, do, in doing something mm -hmm. or get, yeah. you know, the frustration level and things. But that doesn't mean that I have to step in and fix it for you. Mm -hmm. I am a fixer. I like to make things better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm a nurse. I try to make people better all the time. But at the same time, you can fix yourself mm -hmm. too. Like you can fix the circumstances or the situation. You can mm -hmm. learn a new skill. You can, um, you know, figure out a workaround to make, come to the same ending, but just differently. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think there's a, a fine line between too much dependence and too independent. You know, there's there just is, like yes. this balance that all mm -hmm. of us, whether you're, a VIP, a sighted supporter, or just anyone else in the world. Like we all have this balance that we need mm -hmm. to be willing to try to um, find because we all need help sometimes, mm -hmm. but we also need to be as independent as we can be too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it is like a scale where you're constantly putting weights on each side. Mm -hmm. Remember when we were kids, you know, we'd have the little things, we put them on this side and we try to balance right. like which weights would balance each other. And I think that life is a constant balancing act. Oh, where yeah. sometimes you're dependent on me, sometimes I'm dependent on you for different reasons, could mm -hmm. be sight loss related or not, and we're always balancing that scale. Yeah. Because we don't want to be, as you said, it's a thin line. We don't want to be too dependent, and we don't want to be too independent, right. thinking that we don't need anyone. You know, that's not healthy either. No. Because it's like, oh, well, I'm independent, really? Do you have anybody in your life at all? You know, it's like, no, I'm so independent. I don't need anyone. It's like, that's not true. No. We all need, need somebody. people. You know, yeah. we all need people in our lives. And so- Today, here's the thing. Uh, being dependent is looked at a lot of times by somebody going through sight loss as negative. Oh, I don't want to be dependent on anybody. I don't want to be a burden to anybody. And the truth is, sometimes we're just dependent on people. We need help in certain areas. But again, like we said here, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be independent in other areas right. and always doing that balancing act. Yeah. I sort of ran through those questions pretty quick. Is there any thoughts you had on those or anything you wanted to say? No, I think... I just, I, I said I it. it. You said it? Good. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, here's the question for you uh, this week. What is the thing for which you depend on people 
the most? Is it something physical because of sight loss, like, you know, helping you cook or clean or something like that? Is it something emotional, mental, spiritual? What what could it be? Because there's all kinds of things that people depend on others. You know, you might have a friend who is a really good listener and you depend on them to hear you whenever you're going through things. That may be a thing that you depend on them for. So what is something that you depend on someone else for? I'd love to hear about it. If you're watching the video, you can leave it in the comments down below and you can send an email to lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. All right, before we continue, we've got a few housekeeping items. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss another single episode. And if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, uh, make sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app and consider giving us a rating and a review. Also, we'd love to hear from you. Your stories of independence, dependence, whatever it is, you can send us an email at lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Life After Sight Loss. That's right. All right. So we've got our quote of the week. So let's jump right into it. So this quote is an anonymous quote and mm. it says, lean on each other's strengths and forgive each other's weaknesses. Lean on each other's strengths and forgive each other's weaknesses. I think, again, that goes back to that balancing act oh, a yeah. bit. You know, there are things that I have strengths in. There are things that you have strengths in. Mm-hmm. And then there are weaknesses in both of us because we're not perfect people. Yeah. And some of those weaknesses are just the nature of who we are. And some of those weaknesses might be sight loss related. Like, hey, I can't drive a car. I need you to drive. Something like that. Sure. But we have to lean in to each other on the things that we're strong at and remember that we're not perfect. Right. So we might fall over, you know, like, <laughs> like something that's leaning. All right, folks. Well, that is it for us. We want to thank you so much for listening wherever you are. And remember that sight loss isn't the end. It's just the beginning. My name's Derek. And I'm April. And we'll see you in, in the, the next, next one. one.